Are you looking for a magical day trip from Lisbon? Then you have to go to Sintra and watch this video before you go. Very nice castle. Located less than an hour away from Lisbon, Sintra is a historical town where the royals and the rich spend their summers socializing in their stylish and colorful villas and palaces. Now that the royals are long gone, these places are open to the public. So we can finally get a glimpse at how the royals and the rich had lived and socialized back in the days. In this video, I'm going to share some tips and suggestions on how to have a memorable and hassle-free trip to Sintra. But before I get into it, if you are new here, please hit that subscribe button on my channel because without your subscriptions, I wouldn't be able to share these tips and suggestions on my channel. Now that you subscribed, let's get into it. We are on our way to Sintra today. First, Let's just start with the logistics. How to get to Sintra from Lisbon? The best way is by train. It's reliable and it only costs around 3 euros per person. And it takes you to Sintra in 40 minutes. You just need to go to the Rocio train station downtown in Lisbon and make sure to check their train schedules on their website in advance. You can buy the tickets online or in person at the station. Sintra? And don't be late to the train like us. The most important thing here is not to throw away your ticket. Because once you're on the train, you'll be asked to show your ticket. Some people ask if Uber would be a good idea. I don't think so because Uber would cost three to four times more than the train. And it's not much faster. And driving your own car or rental car doesn't make sense either because you won't be able to find the parking near the attractions. With that being said, the most tricky logistics of traveling to Sintra was indeed how to get around once you arrive at the Sintra train station. For some reason, it never occurred to me that there are buses that run the regular route to most attractions. Also, I've heard that there are hop-on and hop-off buses as well. For me, since I was able to get an Uber from the station to the first destination, I thought to myself, I could keep doing this and Uber around. But once I was in the mountains, I couldn't get Ubers anymore. For some reason, Uber drivers kept canceling my rides although they accepted them at first. After being canceled like three times in a row, I had to give in and take this speedy tuk-tuk, which is a three-wheel motor vehicle for tourists. Well, to the, yes. to the main entrance, yeah. Yes. <laughs> During the off-peak season, this speedy tuk-tuk costs around 6 to 10 euros per person per trip. And as for the solo travelers, I would suggest that you get there and leave early during the day. It would be much harder for you to get a ride back to the city center or train station if you are a solo traveler during the off-peak season. To sum it up, if you have time and if you're on a budget, go with the buses. And if you want convenience, try Uber. Call the Uber at the train station and go to the furthest destination you want to go. And then switch to Speedy Tuk Tuk from there. All right, that's all for the logistics. And now it's time to explore this area, Sintra. <sighs> The second most asked question was whether or not a day trip to Sintra was sufficient. And yes, it was. And here are my top two favorite places you can visit on a single day. First place is Quinta de la Gallera. It's classified as World Heritage Sites by UNESCO. 
This place is a must visit because it's packed with symbolism, making a great tribute to Portugal's past. It also gives you a rare opportunity to visit the estate of super rich of Portugal during the 19th and 20th century. The one thing I didn't realize before I went was that the palace in the state is quite modest and a public access is quite limited. You're only allowed to enter the first floor of this palace. But the real star of the estate is actually the vast and exquisite outdoor space, featuring beautiful gardens, gathering space, and the romantic chapel, all embellished with religious symbols. And can you guess what this is? It's for horses. In other words, a fancy garage from the 19th century. And lastly, most people come here really to see this initiation well. It's believed that this well was used for a ceremonial purpose for Templars. Candidates would arrive blindfolded and go down this 30 meter deep tower to eventually reach the light from the darkness. And here's a quick tip about exploring this place. Pick up a map at your entrance and bring it with you because you'll be surprised how easy it is to get lost here. Another thing I liked about this place is that they have a decent cafe that serves food and drinks. I had my first bacalhau, which is one of the best known traditional Portuguese dishes here. Now, the second place that I highly recommend you to visit is the Pena Palace. Built on the top of a hill in the Sintra Mountains, this romanticist castle was built in the 19th century and boasts a unique blend of Neo-Gothic, Neo-Manuelian, and even the neo Mauritius style, that is broadly Western Islamic architecture. It served as the summer residence of the royal family, and having full access to their summer home, you can get a close-up look at their lifestyle. The palace has a small cafeteria where you can grab tea and have some small snacks. Another very popular attraction in Sintra is the Castle of Moor a medieval fortification and ruined castle that is actually located very close to the Pena Palace. I personally skipped this site because I wanted to spend more time at the Pena Palace. Also, I've been to the Great Walls of China. But if you haven't been to major medieval fortifications, you should definitely fit this site into your schedule. Alrighty, that's all I have for Sintra. If you have any other questions, or if you want to share your own experience of traveling to Sintra, please let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to this channel so I can bring new travel videos every week. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next Thursday.